Hi guys, it's Andy the GD Script Dude with another video about Godot Engine. In this uh, one, I want to talk about enums. Here I have a scene where I've got a part in my logic, digital logic game, and it has various inputs, like I've got inputs there, pin 1, pin 2, and so forth, and output pins. And in the code, we want to reference these and instead of you can see like inputs is a node and then I put all my input nodes there so they can be referenced easily as child nodes like they with index of zero one two three four or you another way is to go by the name the, like the get node with the name or and then the outputs is again another node and then it has a couple of pins there which could be referenced by index or name but in my code what i do i'm going to use enums because i want to use index values and they are quite easy to make more readable by using enums because look at this i've got enum and then i define the names of my pins like they are going to be called d for data and clock and set and reset which are just abbreviated to s and r and in godot the the enum it is like setting a lot of constants instead of saying d instead of saying say const d equals zero we can like just put in an enum and then const clock equals one and so forth because actually d is that pin one clock is that pin two s is pin three r is pin four yeah and uh, the same for the outputs i've got qp which is output q positive and output q negative so the enum will assign a value of zero to d and uh, one to clock two to s and three to r and same for this one QP will be assigned a value of 0 and QN will be assigned a value of 1. You get the idea. So down in the code where I need to make use of these, you can see, I, first of all, I'm going to check on the outputs, these output values, and then I'm going to, it's, they're stored as a value of booleans, like maybe the high or low, like true or false values, and an array, which is actually part of the extended uh, script which contains an area of outputs and in this actual uh, derivative extended which is this edge trigger d flip-flop which looks like that go back to the code we have our array of inputs there so going down here again so you see I went if outputs and then to reference the the index of the output I'm using this this enum of QP rather than the rather than an index value which is actually zero but it's much more readable isn't it and easy to debug and understand what's going on if you use enums see QP was that first entry into this these enums you can also give enums a name as well. I could have called it outputs, and then it would be outputs dot qp for that value. But I don't don't really bother in this case because it's quite obvious to me what is qp and what is qn. Their outputs. So we go down here to the outputs. I go output qp. If it is set, and then the other case is if it's not set. Looking back at the, the scene these are the outputs q and not q actually in digital logic but i can't really type that in in text so i, just, I decided to call it qp for positive qn for negative just to make it easy or i could have maybe gone q plus or q minus actually i have done that in other places anyway going back to the code see so if it is positive else it is going to be negative then we evaluate our logic based on the inputs to the gate so again we go we have an input of to this function of updating the output of the pin which pin is it which is an index number then the state is it 
true or false, high or low kind of thing. And then down here, so we, for example, when the output is high, we're only interested in conditions that make it transition to low. So we're going to first check if the pin ID is equal to S, which is a set input. That means it. Yeah, there's a, that means there has been a change on the set input, and the state has gone to false. So that is a condition where we might want to make the output go low because it was previously high and this set one has gone low. But it won't go low unless the reset input is low. So if, oh, if, unless the input, the reset input is high. I'll say that again because it's a bit confusing. The input, the output here is already high. so. If we have an input transition on the set input and that has gone to low, it should remember the existing value on the output. This is the way a D flip flop works. But it may revert to the low condition if the reset input is already high. So that is what the one condition where the we want to set our output to low. And next, if the input pin transition was on the reset one, then yeah, that's a chance we want to go low. And it is a high state, meaning we want to reset. And as long as the, the set input is low, we can do it. So therefore that one. Then the, finally, the set and reset ones take priority if there is actually a clock transition from low to high on the D flip flop then that means we want to we want to move the input state on the D input to the output so we're going to look for this clock has it gone high I it was low before because we gatekeep it we don't we don't change unless there's been a we only update on a change and the, in this case the, the clock will have changed the clock input would have changed and then it has become high and we're going to check that the set input was false like we don't want to keep it high because the the set input was high and we only want to signal a transition if the actual input value of the D input, the data input, was false, I in low. A little bit complicated, I know, but then we, we, we call the set outputs to make it go low. The idea of all this is check the conditions then. If we have, if there's actual changes taken, taken place, then we want to signal to the outside world. So we're going to, we're going to set our outputs. We input that value, be it true or false. We set the QP output, see where the nums come in. Instead of using actual index values, we're using our enum, QP, and QN there. You saw those at the top there. So these are naught and one, meaning that pin there is naught, child zero, child one, child index values. So in here we go with the set outputs we set them we set the actual outputs in the uh, like the memory of it like the array for the output boolean values and then we emit our signals to the rest of the system because this is connected via wires to other things in a in a circuit so we emit we emit the new event signal first this like resets all the chips in our circuit to say okay this is a new event it's not some like feedback loop that is toggling on off on off on off signal link an unstable situation and it says it's a new event and then we loop through our outputs and we emit signals for each of them saying the state has changed and it gives the number of the output and the value of it based on that, what we just set up there the, uh, the outputs value boolean value so yeah we're making good use of uh, you can see everywhere we're using the 
the enum value rather than actual numbers. The next case where the output is low at this point when we when there is something changed again we go there if it's if it's the set input has ch transitioned and it's gone low to high then we want to set the output to true and again if the clock input has transitioned from low to high and we are not forcing the output to be reset by that one being high so we check if the reset is low and we actually do need to change things because the data has changed to high then we finally set the output to high in this case so that was a little bit tricky but hopefully you get the idea of uh, the idea of using enum values rather than actual numbers in your code cheers see you in the next video bye have a good time